100, 6 right, 150, keep middle of a jump with the four left tightens of a crest. Good luck. All right, Zach, here we go. What's up guys, this is Zach from RacingSimTools.com and as many of you know, we just had the new software released two days ago, so we're going to go ahead and show a video of the new software in the background while I talk. Um, you'll notice that there's a handling tab at the top, a suspension tab, a gearing tab, aerodynamics, temperatures, track, run, and driver. Um, within these top level graphs, there's a sub level, so you're seeing me use the drop down below that. Um, so there's about three or four different sets per top tab, so we can think, look at things like the damper histogram, pitch and roll gradients, attraction circle, lateral stiffness distribution. And the reason we have so much data is a lot of times when you're tuning in car, you're going to want to refer to a lot of different graphs to look at a certain behavior. Um, so we pretty much went a little bit on the crazy side. We gave you as much data as you possibly could ever want and they'll allow you guys to how to interpret that how to use the tool to help you get to the optimal setup um, this tool is available for download right now at racingtimtools.com i'll put the link in the description down below but every game is only 15 dollars if you want to use it with multiple sims you do have to buy it with the different games we're going to be coming up with a bulk package where you can buy mul multiple games for a little bit of a discount but right now it's all a cart uh, but awesome turnout for the first release. I think we had something like 200 new users in the first two days, so 100 users per day. Um, we're almost past a thousand active users, so really exciting um, to release this software. But this leads me to the next thing. This video is going to be part of our new series called Tuning 101 with Racing Sim Tools. This first video is going to be about brake bias. We're going to be starting with a very simple concept and we're quickly going to be elaborating on and going into much more complex subjects um, later down the road. So be sure to subscribe if you haven't and go ahead and follow the series. So this first graph that I want to show to you guys is what we call a slip graph and what it shows us is the relationship between how much grip force the car the, and tire is producing versus what the slip angle of the tire is or how much slip the tire is producing. If you look at the y axis this is the grip force and the x axis is the slip. So the red line is a specific tire. This is a theoretical tire that I just made a curve real quick to show you guys. And you can see as we increase the slip, we get more grip force until a certain point. And that's at that dashed line. And if you see there's a little note that says maximum grip force. And this is the slip angle at which we produce the maximum grip of the tire. And you can see if you go a little bit to the right, even though you're increasing your slip angle, you start to decrease in grip. And same thing with the left side. As you're increasing a slip, you're increasing a grip into that certain point, which we call the maximum grip force. This is a really interesting graph that we use a lot to demonstrate a lot of theoretical background. And we're gonna be wanting to consider it in the next few graphs. So I wanna kinda of point out to you guys what the maximum grip force is and how you can spot it on this type of graph. So for the second slide, we're gonna be considering what the ideal brake bias looks like. Um, if we have tires that have a maximum grip force of 6,000 newtons and we have a perfectly um, set up brake bias, meaning that we see the same brake force on the front and the rear, we can see that for this we're seeing 6,000 newtons for brake force. So our utilization is 6,000 over 6,000 or 100%. And if you look on the graphs on the left, this is um, the blue point is where the the force is, the brake force compared to the maximum. And you can see we're right on that dash line, meaning we're using up as much of the tire as possible. So we're using as much grip that both the front and the rear axle tires have to offer. So you can see the total braking force down at the bottom. This is 6,000 newtons times four, which is 24,000 newtons. 
and now we're gonna see what a replay of this looks like so right now I'm on the brakes with an ideal brake bias you can see that both the front and the rear tires are rotating at nearly the same speed um, and we're trying to slow down again it's really slow motion here so just be uh, be on the lookout for that And you can see as the car comes to a stop, the front start starts to lock up just a little bit, but overall the, the front and the rears do not lock up at all. And this was using the same brake force throughout. Um, looking at the RST software, we can see that we're at on the brake 100%. Um, the blue line at the bottom is all the way 100. And you can see that we have about a 12% lock on the front and a 12% lock on the rear, meaning that we're locking up the fronts and the rears equal amounts. So we're gonna be using, again, all of the brake force that the tires can offer us, meaning we're gonna have the smallest brake distance possible. Next, we're gonna be considering what a forward brake bias looks like. And before we start talking about the numbers, let's look at the graphs on the left, the slip graphs. You can see that front um, top graph it has the blue dot a little bit more to the right, which if you look on the y-axis is less than the maximum grip for us. So we're gonna be producing less than the maximum grip for us on the front tires. And if you look at the rear, we are still producing the maximum grip for us at a 100%, so that blue dot is still on the maximum grip for us dotted line. Because we're producing less grip for us on the front or the tires not capable of producing higher levels of grip you can see that braking force is 5,000 newtons so we're less than the maximum which is 6,000 so if you put 5,000 over 6,000 that's 83 percent so we're not using all of the grip on the front tires we're exceeding that grip level that they can give us and we're actually have less grip because of it and if you look at the bottom that leaves our total braking force as um, 22,000 which is 2,000 less than the 24,000 we had on the ideal brake bias and because of this we're not able to brake as hard so we're going to increase our stopping distance so we're not going to we're going to get on the brakes earlier which means we're going to be losing more time in addition to losing time because our braking distance has increased we've also introduced understeer because anytime our front grip is less than our rear grip we're gonna see a little bit of understeer and here is the case of it so anytime you're on the brakes and you have a little bit of a front lockup and you have less grip on the front you're gonna have understeer going into the turn so you're gonna have a little bit of turn in understeer um, which is no good so the next clip we're gonna look at is the replay. So I'm on the brakes already. This is with a 62% forward bias. And you can see that front tire is already locked up. The rear tire is still spinning at the relatively same velocity. We are slowing down, but you can see that front is almost nearly completely locked. Um, this is gonna cause our braking distance to increase. We're not gonna be stopping in as short of a distance. Um, we don't get any lock out of that rear tire, so we're not exceeding its maximum grip force. Next, we're going to look at the data for that forward brake bias in the RST tool. Um, a quick way to identify it, you can see the top graph, which is our front two tires. They're at a 13 to 12% percent lock, whereas the rear axle, the second graph from the top, is only at a 9.7% lock. And if you look at the very top graph, you can see at a certain point that the locking just goes skyrockets that's pretty much where the tire is completely locked and at that point it's not producing any um, stopping power and again if you look at the bottom graph we're using 100 percent brake input and before we move on to rearward bias let's go ahead and compare this front bias to the ideal bias and you can see the front forward bias is the red line on the top graph and the ideal is the blue line so the top graph is the speed trace and you can see when we first start braking there approximately the brake input is given at the same time in the first few seconds we have pretty much the same decrease in speed they are decreasing in speed at the same rate the same deceleration 
However, where the cursor is at, you can see that the red line starts to get a little bit more shallow. It's not stopping as quickly. And the reason because of that is that's where the front brakes, um, the front tires begin to lock up and they're not providing as much grip or as much stopping force for our car. So we're not slowing down as quickly. So it becomes really quickly. You can see how setting up the brake bias to achieve maximum grip force for the entire car is really important. Now looking at this last slide, we're going to be doing the opposite of the Ford. We're looking at the rearward brake bias. And this means we have more braking on the rear. And if we look at the slip graph again on the left, we're looking at the bottom left one this time for the rear axle. You can see that blue dot is a little bit farther to the right, which means we have more slip or locking up the rear brakes just a little bit. And because of it, again, we're less braking force than our maximum. So we have, um, again, a theoretical example on the, the rear axle, we have 5,000 out of the possible 6,000, so we're only using 83% of the grip on the rears. Meanwhile, at the front, we're still at 100%. And again, we're at less than the total brake force of 24,000 newtons. We're at 22,000 newtons with the rearward brake bias. In addition, because we're locking up the rears and we have less grip on the rears, we're going to have a little bit of oversteer. So having a little bit too far brake bias a little too far back is really unstable for the car you're going to always kind of have a little bit of turn in oversteer um, until you get off those brakes and now we're going to look at the replay for it so again i'm at 100 percent brake input right now with a rearward bias no tires are locking up just yet we are slowing down they're relatively the same velocity both tires and there we go the rear is starting to lock up i'm having to begin adding some counter steer because since the rear is locking up it's causing the car to the back to step out just a little bit um, becoming a little bit unstable but again we come to a full stop and the uh, the front tire was not locked up yet looking at the charts from the racing sim tool software Again, looking at the second graph from the top, we are getting some more lock out of the rear tires. You can see they're about 22%, whereas the front tires are around 12, 15%. Um, so we're gonna have, again, a much larger stopping distance, which means we're gonna have to get on the brakes earlier, which means we're gonna be losing time. And again, we're using 100% brake input for this test, um, which you can see at the bottom graph at the bottom. Well, that's going to conclude this video, guys. Thank you for sticking it out and watching to the very end. I know it was a little bit long. I was trying to be as quick as possible, but there are a lot of details that I wanted to convey. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel or follow this playlist. I'm going to be adding more videos on a weekly basis. I'm going to try to do one video per week. And again, this is kind of the basics and we're going to be working our way up in levels of complexity. If you haven't, please join the Discord. We post there every day. If you have any questions on how to do certain setups or if you have any questions regarding car dynamics or driver development, please post there. We try to work with that one one on one with people. Um, and again, we're going to be adding to the manual. So the manual is 130 pages, but right now it's kind of more of an overview of everything. We want to add a lot more details in terms of theory, but that's going to be it, guys. I hope you guys have a good rest of your week and I will catch you later.